Welcome back. This is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. In the last several weeks, we've been talking about different signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia or insulin resistance, high sugar and low sugar. Today, we're going to talk specifically about what type of nutrients might be helpful for those people who have high blood sugar or diabetes or insulin resistance. If you don't understand what insulin resistance is, go back a se uh, several weeks and watch some of our other videos, which will explain the different signs and symptoms of insulin resistance. Today, we're gonna to just talk about different nutrients, okay? So when we look at it, the most important nutrients for diabetes and insulin resistance, we have about seven listed here, okay? Number one on that list is called resveratrol. Resveratrol in the liposomal um, form it would be highly effective in terms of blunting the oxidative stress and improving insulin um, sensitivity. So it's resveratrol. The other one, number two, which is one of my favorite, is berberine. Uh, with berberine, um, basically it's golden seal extracts, etc. But if you use rosehip, burdock root, and alpha lipoic acid along with it, you can have a synergistic effect in terms of reducing the uh, insulin uh, resistance. Short chain fatty acids. Why short chain fatty acids? These are primarily found in the gut and certain types of high fiber foods. But butyrate, propanate, and acetate is basically fuel for your gut. And your gut has a lot of responsibility in terms of hormone regulation, uh, gut diversity, absorption, nutrients, and even sugar management. Number four, glutathione. Again, liposomal delivery of form is best. We use a liquid form in our office that has a high uh, absorption rate, and it's important for blunting the oxidative stress. Genema. Uh, Silvestri, which is another nutrient. EPA, DHA is fish oil, and then diverse uh, fiber. For, for patients who have insulin resistance, what you want to do is be able, be able to blunt the absorption of carbohydrates in the gut. And a high fiber diet uh, will help do that. Another thing it will do, uh, diverse uh, fibers, will also increase short chain fatty acids, such as butyrate, propanate, and acetate. So it has a twofold effect. One, it decreases the absorption of basically sugar in our gut, and also improves, improves gut function by increasing the fuel and creating these short chain fatty acids. So we use something called a veggie mash. A veggie mash is basically taking a diverse group of vegetables that you would not typically eat, right? and then uh, portioning it, cutting it down, dicing it down, and basically being able to grind or mash them up and have maybe even a teaspoon or two tablespoons per day just to diversify the gut. The fiber is very important to uh, improve gut flora and improving overall hormone regulation, immune system, uh, in terms of healing the gut, such as leaky gut or intestinal permeability. So the top seven nutrients are listed right here. Now these can be found in different uh, companies, nutrition um, supplement companies. Um, if you actually look in the link below this video, we have an online store, right? Within the online store, we have nutrients that are available. Now, we don't just go out and say, you can just buy whatever you want from our store. What you need to do is raise your hand and say, can I buy any supplements from you, right? So you can put your name uh, or you can instant message us um, through the Facebook uh, link and let us know if you're interested. There is a small process of getting you set up, um, but once you get set up, you can go ahead and order some of these supplements, right? Uh, we, we wanna make sure the right type of patient is going to take the supplements and not just any random people, uh, which can do more harm than good, okay? So, my name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.